Welcome to Tuesday, the 8th day of March 2022. This Day Weather Podcast, sponsored exclusively by Cowboy State Daily, Wyoming's news authority. Visit them at CowboyStateDaily.com and on their Facebook page. Well, folks, winter weather is going to really dominate over the next several days. It's March, but it's going to feel like January or February out there. We have snow and very cold temperatures coming to all areas. For the western and central United States, a very wintry pattern developing between now and Friday. Arctic front is going to push its way south today through early Thursday. The front is already through Montana, the far northern counties of Wyoming, into the Dakotas, into the panhandles of Idaho, pushing into eastern Washington and Oregon, and it's going to steadily move south. This is going to cause snow to develop north to the south throughout the course of the day today, but especially tonight and tomorrow. This will bring a widespread light to moderate snow event to just about all areas. I think light to moderate amounts are going to be, generally speaking, most areas. But there will be some pockets of heavier snow, as this will be an upslope-driven event where terrain can really make a big factor. When I mean light to moderate, I'm talking around 3 inches upwards to 6 where I talk about heavier snow, that's going to be where you could have areas of six or more inches. Sub-zero temperatures and wind chills are not only likely, they're imminent. And it's going to be really cold through Friday across the whole region. Stock growers and travelers, you got to be prepared. It's going to be another rough couple of days here. Interstate 80, the I-80, I-90, I-25, I-70 corridors are going to be impacted with poor travel conditions and really dangerous livestock weather again, as this is midwinter type of weather that's coming. Now, moderating temperatures will come in this weekend. This weekend into early next week, it doesn't look really warm, but it doesn't look really cold either. We'll get a break this weekend through the first half of next week from the severe cold. Pattern stays busy, though. I see the March pattern staying busy with potentially another storm system developing mid to late next week, and we'll take a look at that. Today's satellite photo doesn't look like much, but up here is the weather associated with the Arctic boundary pushing south right now steadily. Pacific moisture right here, we'll put this as a P, is going to add moisture to the equation, and when you get Pacific air and Arctic air, you take the Arctic air mass and the Pacific air masses and you collide them. It's always a weather maker. It's one way to really have a high confidence snow event around here when you take those two air masses and put them together. And that's exactly what we're going to see. Here is the National Weather Service alert map that shows you where the watches and warnings are. So the blue and the purple and the pinks here show where we have in the Intermountain West and the Pacific Northwest the forecast of winter weather conditions all in this area where the Arctic air is going to slide down like this along and east of the divide. So that's where you're seeing all the weather with this system. As we take a look, the upper level chart shows high pressure in the eastern Pacific, the trough forming in the west, and we have the Arctic air right here pushing southward. As we go forward, you see the subtle change here. This is by tomorrow afternoon. Notice there's a more westerly component right here. Now that would mean sometimes a warmer air mass, but the Arctic air is coming in underneath. Arctic air is very dense. When you get cold, dense air, it's like water. It will always go to the lowest point of gravity. So the Arctic air is hugging close to the ground. Now we get Pacific moisture and Pacific air from the west coast here to come over and on top of the Arctic air. And that's what's going to be causing the snow. Now, by Friday morning, we see the Arctic air is going to get driven further south and east with high pressure trying to build now into the west coast. So by Friday, we sort of start to transition out of it. This is the snowfall forecast. You can see right along this axis from the northwest to the southeast is where the best snows are going to fall. The areas where we think there's going to be enhanced snow will be these darker pink and whiter looking areas where the contrast and the upslope between the Arctic air and the Pacific air will be most, most noticeable. One area is the Cheyenne Ridge along and north of the Cheyenne Ridge, a little bit of the Palmer Divide area here. 
there's good news for, you know, these areas here really need the moisture. Eastern Colorado, Western Kansas, Nebraska really needs the moisture. When you take a look at what's going on with winter wheat prices and spring wheat prices with the global political situation, we are going to be watching very closely the wheat areas of the Western United States to see how the spring pans out. So that'll be good moisture for those areas they really need it. As we take a look at the larger picture across the United States, you can see this tongue of snow go all the way out into the western corn belt. So this is a pretty late season snow event down here. Not unusual, it happens, but the deeper you get into March, the more northeast systems tend to be, even up here in the northeastern United States, a very wintry weather pattern. Temperatures relative to the 30-year normals, look at that, look at all the purple. This is by noon tomorrow. So by noon tomorrow, very cold air for this time of year is centered right here and it's making its push south. So the entire central and western United States really gonna get cold. This is by noon Thursday. You can see a steady progress of the Arctic air south and another push right up here behind it coming out of western Canada. These are temperature forecast lows by Thursday morning. Anywhere you see gray, you're gonna be below zero or a high likelihood of it. The purple, pink colors, you're talking single digits and teens. So for this will be around the 10th of March. That's really, really cold. And these are temperatures by Friday morning. You can see Friday morning, the sub-zero temperatures and the single digit temperatures push even further south and there's a westward push. See that westward push of colder air? Look at the colder air getting into Northern Arizona, Northern New Mexico. Look at the deserts here. Look at these temperatures in California by Friday morning. So this is a very impressive surge of colder air. By Saturday, and Friday afternoon into Saturday, we're all the way now down the boundary of the Arctic air is to the Gulf Coast and pushing into the Midwest and the Great Lakes while we start to see some warmer temperatures beginning to push into the Pacific Northwest. By Saturday, this is by Saturday, see this westerly flow returning? So the Arctic air gets pushed across the nation. We've got this little wave coming here, another little wave behind it, so we continue to see the Pacific producing waves. But the westerly flow, brings back mild temperatures. By Sunday, that wave that's right here, Saturday afternoon, quickly by Sunday afternoon, rolls through the Rockies. And what this will do, this will be a mountain snow event. Sunday into Monday morning, there'll be snow in the mountains. This is where we help the snowpack with these frequent systems that will produce some snow off and on. This though will lead to warmer temperatures. And here we are by noon Sunday, a nice Chinook develops east of the Rockies and we get ourselves into a warmer area right here. So there is a break from the cold coming by later this week and especially noticeable by Sunday into Monday. Long term, this is around the 17th and the 18th of March. So this is by late next week. There's a lot of disagreement in the modeling, but one thing that is showing up is the potential for some type of organized trough coming through the Rockies, Central Rockies and Plains, late next week. So from this weekend, probably through next Tuesday or Wednesday, there won't be much going on. But the second half of next week, that's what we're kind of targeting and looking at as the next significant weather event for the central and western United States. So we'll keep an eye on it for you. Have yourself a good Tuesday, stay warm, and be prepared travelers and stock growers for the return of winter storm conditions.